Hi, this is Jim Smyrnatopoulos again. Let's talk about neurofibromatosis type. Neurofibromatosis type 2 is also called Wishart's disease. Unlike neurofibromatosis type 1, patients with NF2 don't actually make neurofibromas. Instead, they make schwannomas, meningiomas, and ependymomas. This is why the disease is sometimes called the MISMI syndrome. It's caused by a mutation on a different gene from the one that causes NF1. The birth incidence is about 1 in 25 to 50,000, and the prevalence is about 1 in 60,000. This is, a, roughly speaking, about one-tenth the prevalence and incidence of NF type 1. Most patients present in the second and third decades due to bilateral hearing loss from vestibular schwannomas. These patients have minimal cutaneous findings. Again, the critical findings that we find are the patients have multiple lesions due to an inherited loss of a tumor suppressor gene, causing schwannomas, meningiomas, and intramedullary cervical spinal cord ependymomas. So NF1 is not like NF2. It's a totally different genotype, and it has a totally different phenotype. NF1 is caused by a mutation of chromosome 17. You can remember that because there are 17 letters in the word neurofibromatosis and 17 letters in the name von Recklinghausen. NF2 on chromosome 22 can be easily remembered because most patients have two or bilateral vestibular schwannomas and because there are 22 letters and numbers in the phrase neurofibromatosis type 2. So NF1 patients uh, make astrocytomas, optic gliomas, and neurofibromas, and NF2 patients make schwannomas, meningiomas, and ependymomas. Again, it's a totally different disorder. Patients who have NF2 express the phenotype of vestibular schwannoma in almost 100% of cases by age 30. Two-thirds of the patients will have spinal tumors. Uh, one half to 80% will have meningiomas, and about one third will have subcapsular cataracts. Schwannomas typically arise from the sensory ganglia or the nerves themselves, so they should be in a location where you expect to find a nerve. The vestibular schwannoma typically begins as a small intracanalicular mass near the apex of the internal auditory canal in close proximity to scarpa's ganglion. Although they begin inside the internal auditory canal, they rapidly grow out of the canal and into the cerebellopontinangle cistern. In fact, in many patients, the bulk of the lesion is in the cistern, creating the misleading appearance that the tumor is actually arising in the cistern, which is not correct. The tumors arise inside of the internal auditory canal. Think about the shape of an ice cream cone. The three scoops on the top are the portion that's in the cerebellopontinangle cistern, but there's always going to be ice cream in the cone. So always look for that enhancement and enlargement of the internal auditory canal. Again, the literature suggests that the tumors are arising from the vestibular portion of the eighth nerve, not the cochlear portion, and most commonly they're arising from the inferior division of the vestibular nerve. This patient with NF2 demonstrates multiple schwannomas, bilateral cerebellopontine angle vestibular schwannomas, and a trigeminal schwannoma in the cavernous sinus. Compare the side with a schwannoma to the normal side that shows the typical contour of a flat or slightly concave lateral margin to the cavernous sinus. These are two different patients, but both of them demonstrate bilateral cerebellopontine angle masses. Note that bigger schwannomas are older lesions, and the older lesions typically can become heterogeneous due to benign cystic degeneration. Patients who have NF2 can also develop multiple nerve root lesions, and these nerve root lesions are typically schwannomas. Notice that they are rounded masses because schwannomas are typically circumscribed and encapsulated masses.
Another patient with NF2 emphasizing the high frequency of spinal lesions. This patient has an intradural extramedullary lesion, which is a spinal meningioma, and the patient also has an intramedullary ependymoma. Another patient with NF2 demonstrating the typical appearance of an expansile spinal cord with irregular and heterogeneous contrast enhancement. Another patient with NF2 illustrating bilateral cerebellopontine angle masses. There are, are also two lesions that are attached to dural structures, one attached to the tentorium and one attached to the Fox cerebri. Because they're not touching nerves, they're not likely to be schwannomas. Because they're touching the dura, they're most likely going to be meningiomas. And in the same patient, the cervical spinal cord shows an ependymoma. So these are the lesions that we see in patients who have NF2 caused by the chromosome 22 mutation. We want to remember then that neurofibromatosis type 2 can be summarized as multiple inherited schwannomas, meningiomas, and ependymomas.